What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video. In this video, we're going to check out how you can power your NFT data analysis journey using the Morales Python SDK. So here I'm on OpenSea, the CryptoPunks collection, and they have this analytics tab that's in beta. And in this tab, I found this volume and price graph, which was pretty cool. So you get the volume of CryptoPunks traded each day for the past seven days and the average price represented with this line. So I thought using the get transfer by contract endpoint from the Morales NFT API, you could build this very simply yourself and Python being powerful with data. I thought it'd be a great example to show how you can use Morales with Python. So in this tutorial, we're going to create this simple script to use the get NFT contract transfers endpoint from Morales and process this data. And at the end, you'll create a very similar graph to what we had on OpenSea, having the volume and price of CryptoPunks for the past seven days. If this sounds exciting to you, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, to get started in this project, start off in your IDE. We have this empty repository called NFT Analysis. And let's create a Python file in here. Touch, we can call it data.py, for example. And now we have this Python file. Let's open it up and start by bringing in all the dependencies we'll use in this project. So there's a bunch of them. And make sure that you install them using pip. So you run pip install morales numpy pandas, et cetera, et cetera. I've already installed them, so I won't need to do this. And then we can close down our terminal and go ahead and start writing our functionality in here. First, let's store our API key for Morales in a variable over here. So API underscore key equals our Morales API key. And we can always get our Morales API key from our admin dashboard. So open up Google Chrome and navigate to Morales.io. There you'll have a chance to log in or create a new account. It's totally free and you'll come to your admin dashboard. Here in the sidebar, you can click Web3 APIs and you'll have your API key ready for you and you can view it, but I'll just copy it. You should always keep your API keys safe. This is just for testing purposes. So that's why you see it over in here. But now you have your API key stored in here and we can go ahead and create our morales api call to get all the nft transfers for our selected collection we'll do crypto punks just to make things simple so to do that let's go ahead and run result equals and then we're bringing in evm api from morales so we can use that evm underscore api and we'll use the nft api and we'll use the get nft contract transfers endpoint from there and then we'll have to pass in the parameters which will be our API key. And we've stored this in our variable API key. So we'll just use our API key from there. And then the parameters will be equal to an object. And now what we can do is go ahead and head over to docsmorales.io to check out what parameters are required to get NFTs for contract transfers. So open up Google Chrome. Here I have docs.morales.io open and we've opened up transfers by contract over here. And we see that we only have one required parameter, which is the address. So the NFT contract address. And then we can, of course, provide the chain that we want to look at, look at which will be Ethereum for CryptoPunks. And later we'll check out this cursor parameter because the limit for each API request is 100 transfers. So if we want more than the past 100 transfers, we can go ahead and use this cursor to loop around to get more than 100 transfers. But then again, we have the CryptoPunks collection open here on Etherscan where we have the contract address so we can copy that and use that as the address. So jump back into Visual Studio Code and we'll pass in the address and chain over here like so. So this is the CryptoPunks address and it's on the Ethereum network. And now our results variable will have the response from our NFT API and what we can do is turn the result object in the response, which will have an array of all the transfers into a pandas data frame. So what we'll do is create a variable over here, df, and we'll use the JSON normalize function over here to get the result and it'll have a result key, which will have array of all the transfers. And this will turn our JSON response into a pandas data frame. And we can actually go check it out by running print df like so. So now this is a minimal viable product where we can get a data frame of the 100 past transfers. Let's open up our terminal and run this. So go ahead and run Python 3 data.py. And look at this. Here we have a sample of our data. We have 100 rows of data and each one has a block number, block timestamp, and all a bunch of other data. We have 16 columns. We can check out the docs, whatever other data we have by going to Google Chrome over here, checking out our response 
and we have all this data in our result object. We have the token address, we have the token ID from address to address value in the native currency amount contract type block number, and you get the point. So we'll be interested in the value. So the amount of native currency, so Ethereum in this case, that was transferred alongside the transfer. So we let's go ahead and check that out, jump back into Visual Studio Code, and rather than printing our DF, let's look at the value column over here value like so and run this again. So press the arrow key, run python3 data.py. And look at this, here we see the value of each of the transfers. So the very first one was 67 Ethereum over here. So this is 18 decimal points, some of them were zero. So people just transferring their crypto punk from one wallet to another, for example, to a vault wallet or whatever. So we won't be interested in these. So this is good information for us, we can do our first bit of processing by eliminating all the rows where the value associated with the transfer was zero, because we're only interested in transfers from one wallet to another where someone purchased it for a specific amount of ether. So let's go ahead and do that next close down your terminal and go ahead and do our first line of processing over here. So our data frame will be our data frame, but only the rows where the value is not equal to zero. And you notice the value is in string format. So we'll have to do some processing later on to turn those values into actual integers so we can play around with them and get the average prices, the volume, etc. But now this should have us going pretty nicely. Let's save that open up our terminal again and run the same line. And this should only give us transfers where some Ethereum was transferred alongside the transfer of the CryptoPunk NFT. And you see this here, someone sold their NFT for 100 Ethereum, and most of them are between that 60, 80 Ethereum limit. So that's very good. Now we have a data frame where we have all the transfers where Ethereum was sent alongside the transfer. All right, so what we'll do next is let's go ahead and check out the responses we've got over here. So the original data frame has the block timestamp, but we're interested in all the transfers that happened on a specific day. So we have to create a new column where we get the specific day the transfer happened to. So this will help us aggregate the average sell price and the volume for each specific day. So let's create another column, which will have the specific date, not the exact time of the transfer. Let's go ahead and that'll be a bit of a mouthful. But remember, this repository will be in the link in the description if you want to check it out over here. So in our data frame, we'll create a date column. And what it will do, it will look at block timestamps, 10 first digits, which will be the date in year month day format. And we're using the date time library to go ahead and change it to a three character month and two digit day representation of the date. So we can go ahead and check that out by printing not the DF value, but the actual data full data frame, save that check out what our console says right now. So scroll to the bottom and run it again. And look at this. Now we have all the dates over here. So the dates on November 22nd, we had three transfers November 21st, we had three transfers November 20th, we had a whole bunch of transfers and so on and so forth. So now this will be easy for us to get the average price of the transfer and the total volume transferred for each date. Let's go ahead and do that next by going ahead and getting all the unique dates from our new current data frame, like so. And we also reverse the order of these dates, because of course, we have them in descending order. But we only want to present them on our graph, we want them to be in ascending order. So from the left, you have the most historic date. And on the most right side, you have the most recent date. So this is just giving us an array of all the dates. So we can loop through all the dates and get the average price and volume for each date. So let's go ahead and create that loop next. But before we have that loop, we have to have an array for all the volumes and average prices for each of the days we have in our data frame. So we can append these arrays with the data we want to present in our graph. So now for the loop, we want to loop through our dates. So for each date in dates, we want to create a temporary data frame like so. So now our temporary data frame will only have the rows where the date column matches the specific date in our unique dates array. Then like I said, our values are in string format and have the 18 decimals from the native network, we want to go ahead and change those strings into integers and divide by the decimals to get the Ethereum value. So what we'll do is we'll look into our temporary data frame value column and change all of them into integers and divide by the 18 decimals to get the Ethereum values. So now we have this values array with all the values, which will include 
a price for every transfer that have happened on the specific date we are currently looping through, after which we can append to this volumes array the sum of all the values for a specific day, like so. So we append to the volumes array using NumPy, the sum of all our values for a specific day. And we do the same thing for the average price to so appending into this average array, like so. So our averages, we append using NumPy, the mean of all the values for a specific day. And this might be a bit of a mouthful, but now if we go ahead and print rather than the DF, let's print our dates, print our volumes, and print our averages, you should now see three arrays pop up in your terminal with all the specific dates, the volume that was traded for each date and the average price that was traded for each date. So if you save that open up our terminal, we can go ahead and clear this just to make things neat and tidy and then go ahead and run python three data.py. And look at this. Now we have November 17th, November 18th, November 19th, so on and so forth. And for each date, we also have the total volume traded for that day and the average price of each transfer that happened on that day. Pretty sweet, right? Now all that's left to do is put these into a nice graph using matplotlib. So go ahead and close this. And as we have all these, we can go ahead and start creating our graph. All right. So what we'll do is initialize a figure and a axis. Then on our primary axis, we'll add the volumes. So the volume traded for each date. And on the x axis, we of course have our dates. So if we check out, we'll have these dates on the x axis, and these volumes on the y axis. But as we also want to have a secondary axis on the right side with all the average prices, we'll have to create a secondary axis over here. So axis two, which will have a twin x axis, and then there we'll just plot a straight line graph with the average prices to make it clear like so. So here we'll just plot on the x axis dates, the average prices for each date, and we give it a nice purple color. And now all that's left to do is show our graph. After that, we can go ahead and start making it look neater. So what we'll do is do plot show, and then we're ready to go. Make sure to save your file, open up your terminal and go ahead and run Python three data.py. And look at this, it opens up this graph for us. On the left side over here, we have the volume traded for each date. And on the right axis, secondary axis, we have the average price. So the line graph represents the average price for each day. And the bar graphs over here use this primary y axis showing us the volume traded for each day. How cool is that? Now, as you can see, before we go ahead and style this nicely, we can go ahead and count that we have one, two, three, four, five, six bars over here. And that's because we only have from our Morales API call the 100 last transfers. So now we can go ahead and get the last 200 or last 300 transfers. So we have more transfers. And this way we can present the last seven days and not just the last six days because most people would like to see the last week's transfer history. So let's go ahead and implement that first and then style this to look nice and kind of replicate the look and feel that we had on OpenSea. So you can close this up, close up your terminal, and we can scroll all the way up here where we make our EVM API call. And what we'll do is go ahead and above the results, we'll initialize a empty string for our cursor to start off with and a empty data frame. So we have a cursor variable and a empty data frame, which we can then fill with the results of our API call, then what we'll have to do is chuck our API call into a for loop. So let's run for x in range, we'll first of all, make two loops around and then make sure you indent this correctly, like so. And now going down a little bit, we can go ahead, go ahead and first get the cursor that our API call responds with like so. So now we have the cursor. And when we loop around again, we can actually call the cursor as a parameter in our API call. So initially, we'll just use an empty cursor. But as we go through the second loop, we'll actually have the cursor that our first API call gave us. And this will give us the next 100 transactions. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to populate our data frame. So what we'll do is create a DF2, where we use JSON normalized to create a pandas data frame from our results. And then we'll check if our data frame is empty. Scroll down a little bit. If our data frame is empty, 
we'll set our data frame to whatever the result is. So this is going to be on the first iteration, but then else we'll concat our first data frame with our second API responses data frame. So this will allow us to loop through more than 100 transfers as many times as you want. Of course, you could look at the last thousand transfers by changing the range to 10. But I believe that doing two loops will get us enough transfers to get us the past seven days results. But then, of course, you need to be aware of Morales API call limits, and you can only make one call of a five compute unit wait. So we'll have to wait using the time dot sleep for 1.1 seconds before running our second API call. So now with this setup, we don't have to set the data frame after our API call loop over here. So we can remove that. And because we might get more than the past seven days of unique dates, we can over here only get the seven most recent dates like so again, this might not be the most efficient way to do things. But for the sake of this example, it works perfectly. Let's save this. And now what I'll do is go ahead and over here, print the DF that shows that we will have 200 transfers as we're looping through the NFT API call twice. But also as we at the end, show our plot, we should get the plot to display as well. So let's go ahead and print the DF at this point of the script, save that. And now as we open up our terminal, we can just clear it to make things clear, and then go ahead and write Python three data.py like so. And check this out. Now we have the last seven days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we check out our terminal, the data frame we have has 200 rows. So that means we loop through the get NFT contract endpoint twice using the cursor parameter. So all good right now. Now, Last thing to do is make this graph look nice like we have on OpenSea, and then we are completed. All right, so let's close down our current graph. Let's close down the terminal and let's just run through quickly these stylistic changes we're going to make. And these will be in the final repository. So you can just skip through this if you'd like. So at the start, we'll make sure we'll use a dark background. Then we'll set a custom color for the background of the whole graph and then the background inside the axes. Then we'll make sure to add a grid with horizontal axes and give that a color. And we'll make sure that that's at the bottom. So then that our bars will be displayed on top of our grid, we can go ahead and give them a Z order of for example, three and make them a nice whitish color over here. And then let me just paste a lot of stuff down over here. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we only have three axis ticks on the y axis, We'll make sure to give it a label for this primary y axis, which is the volume in Ethereum, and we'll remove all the axis spines. So that's the box that was surrounding the graph in our first version. And then we'll do the same thing for our secondary axis over here, like so. So we only make sure that we have three horizontal ticks, and then the y label is average price on the secondary axis in Ethereum, and we get rid of the box surrounding the graph with these axis spines visible set to false. And now we can actually remove these prints from over here, save this. And this is the final script. If we go ahead and run this opening the terminal run Python three data.py look at what this should look like. Absolutely stunning, almost looks identical to what we have on OpenSea. The one thing we're missing is the title, which is the volume and price. So we can go ahead and add that press uh, X over here, go ahead, scroll down and include a title for our plot like so. So what we're adding is a title with volume and price for crypto punks, we'll put it on the left top side of the graph, and then just some stylistic features over here. And then as we run this, now we should get a beautiful graph like so. So here we have the volume and price for crypto punks for the last seven days, November 22nd, 21st, 20th, 19th, 18th, and so on and so forth. The bars representing the total volume for that day, and then the line graph representing the average price for sales for that day. And that's the information is here on the secondary axis. How sweet is that A little data analysis using the Morales API and Python. So if you haven't got yourself stuck in with the Morales Python SDK already, this is a cool way you can get started doing some NFT analysis. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And you can put learnings of this to good use. I'll catch you in the next one.